In the New Orleans tradition of Mardi Gras, they serve king cakes. And today I'm going to show you how to make a king cake, which is just a fancy coffee cake that has a baby put into it. And the most popular fillings that uh, around Louisiana are a pecan praline uh, cheesecake and then uh, a, che a cream cheese with raspberry filling. And the basic coffee cake is the same uh, recipe. You just have to put different fillings to make it different. And as the tradition goes, who, there's a little dog placed in the king cake, and this can be done after it's baked. And whoever gets the king cake when they're served a slice is the person who has the next king cake party. And these king cake parties usually are started on January 6th, which is the night of the Epiphany. And then they go until Mardi Gras. But they're delicious to do any time of the year. But first of all, uh, there's a little thing you need to know about whenever you make a king cake. It's a yeast product. And yeast kind of scares some people off, but it's really easy to use. You just can't add anything to the yeast that's too hot and it will, will not make it active. So the first thing we're gonna start off doing is making the um, yeast mixture. And the recipe that I'm using is gonna be on the website under recipes, or there's a button to be able to print this out at the end of the blog. So don't worry about the recipe. We're gonna take a tablespoon of yeast and mix it with a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of flour. And this is just plain flour. Okay, you're gonna mix this together with a quarter cup of water. Now, just mix this together. The yeast I use is just some dry yeast. It comes in a bulk package. And to uh, extend the shelf life of it, I just put it in a um, screw top jar and just put it in the freezer and just take it out as I need it. So we're gonna take this yeast mixture, mix it all up, and then we're just gonna set it to the side because with adding that sugar and that flour, it's gonna have something to feed on and it's gonna start getting active and be bubbly. If it doesn't start to foam and be bubbly, there's a problem there and you don't need to go any further till you get better yeast. Okay, the next uh, mixture we're gonna make, mix up is the milk. We're gonna take a saucepan and put a half a cup of milk in with a stick of butter, two sticks of butter because it's one cup. So we're gonna take the two sticks of butter, put them in the saucepan with the milk, and we just want to heat this until the butter is melted. So we'll just put this on here and let it start melting. Now, we, while that's melting, let's mix up our flour mixture. We'll put two cups of just regular flour, all-purpose flour in here, and then we're going to put um, a teaspoon of um, baking powder. No, it looks like a teaspoon. Okay, and then a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, we're going to need to mix this all up so we'll be able to be ready to add it to our milk mixture. We got our yeast going here. And then this is the uh, two eggs and two egg yolks that we're going to mix in with the milk mixture. Now our butter is melted and our milk, and we're going to pour this into the mixing bowl. And you cannot add anything to it right now because it's a little too warm. So we're just going to take our mixer and turn it on and it will, it's going to cool this mixture down. You can feel it on the bottom of the bowl that it's really almost too hot to cut. So in order not to deactivate our yeast by this mixture being too hot, we're just gonna wait till the bottom of this bowl cools down a little bit and it'll take uh, mixing it like this for about three minutes. Okay, now our 
milk mixture with the butter has cooled down enough that we can add our two eggs and our two yolks and also uh, our flour. I'm going to turn the mixer on. It's kind of noisy. Now, I added the yeast mixture, the two cups of flour that had the cinnamon and the baking powder in it, and uh, the egg. So we want to mix this up till it's well mixed, and then we're going to add our dough hook on here with the rest of our, our two cups of flour. So we'll turn it, the mixer on. mixing blade out and then just put in your dough hook and then we're going to measure out another two cups of flour and remember you want to measure it just where uh, not the packing method just spoon your flour into a cup measuring cup and then just level it off so we get the right measurements and then we're going to put that into the bowl now, we're ready just to start mixing it up, and you will see, this is not a batter, it's a dough, like a real soft bread dough. Now, if your dough doesn't, it's not wet enough, it's going to just form into kind of a stiff ball around the dough hook. And I'm going to let this down so y'all can kind of see, it just is, is really stiff. So what we need to do is add a little more water to it. And uh, you might have measured everything correctly, but with uh, different flours, you just have to adjust the water because the light, the stickier the dough, the lighter your uh, king cake is going to be, and it'll be a little tastier. Okay, now we're going to, our dough has formed the ball all around our dough hook, and you see it's not sticky, so sticky that we will stick to the hook but it just makes a nice round ball. Now, what we want to do with this, to, this is a little trick to speed up the process of making the king cake and get it to rise, is take a little bit of butter and just grease the ceramic bowl with it. Now, um, we want this to coat the bowl but we're going to put this bowl in the microwave for 30 seconds on high. And when we put it in there, 30 seconds on high, it just kind of heats up that ceramic bowl. And then it's going to make your yeast act faster and be, you'll be ready to roll your king cake out and finish it out in about maybe about 20 minutes. So rather than having to wait a couple of hours for this to double in size take the bowl out of the microwave it really hasn't even melted all the butter but the bowl feels a little bit warm to you so you're going to take your ball of dough out of your mixing bowl and you want to kind of form it into a smooth ball so kind of tuck in the edges roll it around and kind of pinch it together and then you have a nice smooth surface okay you're going to put it in your bowl and just turn it over and just with that little bit of butter that you have buttered your bowl with, it's going to butter the top of your uh, king cake dough here. And you're going to be ready then just to place a dish towel. Got some new dish towels for Christmas. We're going to place new, a dish towel over here and just let it set until it doubles in size. And this, it's according to how warm your room is and if there's a draft but I find you're heating your oven to bake your king cake with anyway. So just put it on the back of your oven, I mean, top of the stove back there, and it just gives it a little warm environment so it'll just go ahead and double in size. Okay, now we have wait and let our dough rise till double in size. I punched it down, and I'm going to turn it out onto this flour board. I put my spoon side down, and I'm just going to kind of work this out 
into a square because this recipe makes two king cakes, um, as you can see, um, this size. So we need to divide our dough in half, and we're just going to use a dough scraper, cut it in half, and put one half of it back in the bowl until we get ready for it. Now, with the other half, you want to kind of size it up just using your hands. This is a wooden cutting board that I have here, but you could roll it out on this countertop if you wanted to. Now, I need a little bit of flour. Okay, we're gonna take the flour, sprinkle it over the dough, and make sure that you kind of roll your rolling pin in a little bit of flour too. This will keep it from sticking. And in this case, this board is exactly the length I needed for the um, dough to be. And you want to roll it thin, about nine inches wide. And you want this to, it's going to feel kind of like the thickness of pie crust, but it's a lot more forgiving. You can just move this dough around. It's kind of elasticity, has elasticity to it, and you just kind of even out the thickness of it with your hands if you see that it's not getting uniform as you like it. Okay, you want to make sure you lift it up because you don't want this dough to shrink back on you. So lift it up, make sure it's all loose. And when you have it about in this shape, you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. Then you're going to put your filling on here. And as I mentioned, this cream cheese is so popular. And at party time, we have eight different flavors of filling. Now these flavors come in two pound packs and they have a long shelf life. And so you just take the scissors, cut the end off, and then you can just squeeze out the filling in the center. And I like a lot of na na in the middle, so I put three rows. Now just take your filling and just work it back in the tube, and then you can put a twist tie on it, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then save it for the next time you're making a king cake. But we're gonna take and spread this out. Okay, once you get it kind of spread out, if you want to make a praline pecan, you would put that on top, or you can come in and just this is raspberry that I've already made a king cake out of earlier. You just take it and you can just put that on top and spread it. And this end is going to be the straw, the raspberry cream cheese filling. But just to show you how to make the pecan praline, you're just going to come in here and let me get my pecans. Now these are toasted pecans. Just put them in a microwave on high till they get fragrant and chop them up and you've got chopped toasted pecans. And then this is cinnamon. And you will just sprinkle some cinnamon over your cream cheese. Take your sugar, brown sugar, and just sprinkle over the top. And lots of good pecans. Okay, so now we have two fillings in this one cake. Normally you wouldn't do that, but I wanted to show you how to do it. Okay. So you're going to fold this over the 
top of the dough, you're going to fold this over, and then just let me get the water here. This is just a little cup of water. Dip your fingers in here and just go along and wet this edge. And that way your dough is going to seal and your filling won't be oozing out. Okay, so lift this up and kind of like pie crust, you're just going to come in here and pinch this together. Okay, now, once you get this pinched together, you're going to put it on a cookie sheet that has uh, parchment paper on top. So we have our parchment paper on there. And then to get this long loaf onto the top of this paper, then you're going to come, let me put it over here, maybe you can see it a little better. Okay, you're just going to fold this in, the two ends like this, so you can transport it to this paper, parchment paper, lined cookie sheet. Okay, then you want to turn the seam side down so that you have a pretty smooth top on your king cake. And you'll just kind of work it around. And then you have to kind of make the two ends kind of overlap and meet. And then, and you, you can see, you can just kind of work it out. And if you feel like the filling is, is um, kind of um, bunched up in one place, just press on it and get it. And then you're ready for it to go in the oven, except for brushing it with a little bit of melted butter. So for your melted butter, you're just going to come and put this on top, and this will oil the top of your dough so that it will rise. If it gets too dry, it'll get crackly and won't rise. So now then, you're ready just to leave this out. It's according to how warm your room is, but here again, when it kind of gets not quite doubled in size, but about 30 minutes, it'll get to get, you'll see it's starting to rise, then you'll be ready to put it in the oven. We're going to take the king cake out of the oven. It's gotten nice and brown. And you thump it, you hear a hollow sound, you know it's ready. Now, this is egg wash. It's just an egg that we beat up, and then we're going to take and brush our king cake with it. And you see how it gives us this shiny look? You need to do this as soon as you take it out of the oven because this is egg and you want the heat from your uh, cake, king cake, to cook this egg that you're putting around it. So look how pretty it looks. We're going to come back now and glaze it with some um, white icing and put our sugars on there uh, in just a minute. Okay, we've got our king cake out of the oven. It's cooled slightly, but we want to finish with our frosting that we're going to put on here. It's just a, a glaze type icing. Uh, the recipe is powdered sugar with milk and a little bit, uh, I put butter vanilla uh, flavoring in here. And mix it up. You want it to be kind of a thick like consistency because you want it to uh, have time for your sugars to stick. But this seems a little bit thicker than I want it to be. I'm gonna put it in the uh, microwave just for a little bit. So I'll put it in here at 30 seconds. And we baked it on parchment paper so that it's easy, it won't stick and it will come off. But you wanna finish decorating it on this parchment paper before you put it on a board. Now this is a, a board that uh, I got at party time. Uh, it's double thickness so it'll hold up and it's, of course it's got this beautiful gold foil on here which is gonna make it look really festive. But um, first decorate it on the parchment paper, it's easier. So. Now we have our frosting that we heated just a little bit. And you can see now it's much thinner and it'll be better to spread. 
Now you can um, come in here and just take a spatula of icing and just spread it on here. And I wouldn't go too far with it because here again, you don't want the sugar for it to cool where the sugars won't stick. So let's just take our purple sugar and here again, this is what we purchased at party time and we'll do our stripes around here for our purple, green, and gold. And then we can come back on here with a little bit more icing. You don't really want to bury it in this icing, but this does add a little flavor to it too with this butter vanilla in the glaze. So go ahead and then you're just going to alternate your colors. And that's one good thing about your um, sugars, put decorating it on this parchment paper because then it will catch all the excess sugar that, that you have on here. Okay, now look how we turn this rich coffee cake into a king cake with the festive icing. Now we want to put the baby in there. Now these are little baby dolls and here again you can get them from party time and we do have a shopping cart online. But we just want to push this in under so nobody knows where the king cake baby is. And then we can come in here and then put our king cake onto our festive board here. So let me just pick this up. We're working on here. And now that finishes it off. Have some Mardi Gras beads. You can put them around and decorate and make it really look festive. And happy Mardi Gras.